Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on Feroid Studio, where I will be teaching you how to make your very own avatars. Simplest to do is to start using one of these samples. For this sample we are going to turn Sendagaya Shino into a custom model, which you can already see here in the My Prefab. In order to do so, simply click on Shino, which will open this window. You will get her as a preload. Now a preload comes with a lot of layers and settings, which you can also always customize as you prefer yourself. Let's say for the face, so let's zoom in on the face, which you can simply do by scrolling and dragging with the middle mouse button. You can also right click to rotate the model, or left click to not really do anything. Simply as you can see by dragging this, we can change the face, we can change the slant, just experiment with the sliders and you can customize it as you see fit. Now every tab of these has two main parts. They always have a design part, which is actually used to like transform the model. And then there's a texture layer, which as the name indicates, defines the texture. Every part has the same setup, guide, layer, default image. Some parts are not translated yet. I can't really find one now, but sometimes it will have some Japanese symbology, which just indicates that it hasn't been translated yet. But just assume that it's always guide layer default image. Now, why are there three layers? This is for the very simple reason. You have the guide layer, which is these lines that you can see. If I disable them, right click toggle visibility after clicking it, obviously, then you'll see that there aren't any guides. If I now toggle the visibility again, then the guide is visible again. The default image is the one you can see on this side because if I disable it, as you can see, it has been disabled, no longer visible, and it also doesn't display any longer on the model. Now, so you are here probably because you want to create a model for VR chat or another application. When using this to create a model for VR chat, if you are using a quest, like a Oculus Quest, you have to keep in mind that you are limited in the shaders that you can use and the limitations of those shaders. The biggest limitation of the shaders is that it does not deal well with transparency. And three of these layers actually use transparency to render, being the eyebrows, the eyelashes and the eye line. So what will you want to do is you'll want to toggle their visibility because we can't use them. You can see it also changes our model because obviously we are removing textures. Now this isn't the model that you would want to use, right? Luckily there is an easy fix. You simply add these textures that you just removed to the face skin. Well, you can't one-to-one -one add them as the textures you use for the eyebrows are like they're prepared to get warped on the model, whereas this is a flat texture. So you'll have to be a bit creative and test out what locations work for what you want to do. Like, see, if I draw on this, you can just use this to customize your model or your texture rather. Like if I want to add some eyebrows, I can simply draw them on here and that would give me some very bushy brows. Or otherwise you can select right click on the default image and then export, which allows you to export the layer as it is. Then you can open that layer in whatever photo editing software you want. This can be Paint, this can be Paint.net, uh, Photoshop, GIMP, or there's a plethora of other optional photo editing softwares. Now I already made one thing for myself, namely, ba -ba -ba -ba, I'll add it to the layer. The default layer, by the way, that's here, not the default image, but the layer always is empty. As you can see, it's empty. If I remove the guides, just an empty image as you would see in Photoshop or any other software. If I draw on this, you can see it's filling in the face. Now I'll import, right click import, one of the faces that I made myself. Where is it? Demo face. There we go. I know it's not the prettiest, but it gives you a decent indication of what goes where. As you can see, this line, eyebrows, eyelashes, eye line. Next up, there's the hair editor. This hasn't been translated at all yet, but basically if you click on something, you'll see where on the head it belongs. Same as before, there's a design texture and a bone. Now the bones you'll want to reduce as much as possible, keeping in mind though if you have less bones there will be less waving in the hair and stuff. But in general the less bones you use in your hairs, the less bones will be used for your model and the more optimized your model will be. For the texture, same as before, you can export it, you can edit your texture. If I do this, same as before, editable as desired. 
Now this hair layer, it's uh, for the small hair clip thingy. That's generally all there is to it. It's just in design, customize it as you see fit. And then in textures, create it as you see fit. If you don't want something, simply hide it. Then the clothing editor, perhaps the most fun part to work with in this entire program. Like just, you select here what category of the outfit you want. Then here you can select different options. Now keep in mind though that some layers, like let's say these stockings, or on the skin layer, if you don't want stockings, Simply like give the skin texture instead of this. And as you can see, I shall now provide you with an example of what you can achieve if you do some editing on these layers. Keep in mind though, this is the base model that I used, but with some Photoshop skills, you can transform it into something like this. What I did for this, well, I simply shortened the shirt. Anything you don't apply a texture for will simply be rendered transparent because, well, no texture is different from transparency. It's weird, but it works. Same for the skirt, shortened that in a bit. Provide some different textures on everything. Also, didn't provide any textures for the shoelaces, so they don't get rendered. Changed the hair color, gave a different hair texture, removed some layers, added some other layers. Yeah, that's basically all there is to the V-Roid character editing in order to actually like export your model simply go to camera slash exporter export now you'll have your triangles which basically are your polygons your materials and your bones i somewhat optimized this character not entirely but it's slightly optimized because normally it has like 150 bones i believe so that's already slightly better. I want to modify the hair cross sections, which already is going to remove normally a lot of polygons, or not. Yeah, okay, it removes some because the hair is pretty optimized already. Then the transparent meshes, which is like, like I said before, the short and thin skirt. That's now transparent, so we don't want that. Let's also select that, because otherwise it is going to render it, I believe. That doesn't do a lot now, but normally it does quite a lot. But since I already did it in the settings as well, it's slightly better. Then the hair and the face. I suppose we can save a bit on the face. As you can see, the more I slide this, the more angular the face becomes. If you zoom in, you can see it even better. See? Like less polygons, so more squareness. Same for the hair. For this model, I don't really care that much about performance as I won't be using it. But yeah, that's basically it. Then you simply select material reduction, go to two. Preferably you only have one material, but sadly enough Feroid only allows for two materials, because none simply doesn't change anything. So you go for two materials, that just meshes everything together. I believe it goes to a face material and a body material. You shouldn't notice any differences here. I tend to go for a slightly lower resolution, as that tends to load in better as well. And it's just, well, no need to go overkill anyway. And then we click export, give it a name, author version and we press OK. Then we save it and then we can export it into Unity Hub so we can use it in VRChat. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comment section. So yeah, I hope this was useful. I hope my blathering and stuttering wasn't too annoying to listen to. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.